Hey guys, so I've done multiple videos on these cheap plug and play guitar wireless systems and I decided to do kind of one big final one or at least final one for now that kind of just gives you advice on which one you should get. If you scroll through Amazon, for example, you see so many different options on which wireless options there are. It's almost overwhelming, but the thing is, is that a lot of them are very, very similar. I'm going to break it down for you and give you kind of my final advice at the end on what you should do and what it, how you can have have a reliable system for only a hundred or less dollars. So going back to the scroll through Amazon, you'll notice that almost all of these look the same. You will find other ones that look a little bit different that have like a receiver that needs power or something like that. This video is going to concentrate on the simple plug and play ones where you just have a transmitter and a receiver. They have an internal battery, so it doesn't need any other power. You just charge it before you use it. You plug one into your guitar and you plug the other one into your amp or your pedal board or your audio interface or whatever you're doing. And then you play. That's what this video is going to focus on. Not so much these other ones because part Part of what's convenient and awesome about these wireless units is that it doesn't need any other external power. They're very portable, just plug and play and you go. So that actually will not include looking at the Line 6 G10, which I did review in another video, but because the receiver needs to have power, I'm not including this one in the simple plug and play, even though the transmitter itself is a plug and play device. All right, before we get started, I post music tech videos all the time, wireless, MIDI, gear reviews, stuff like that. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so these are the ones that I currently have. There's no way that I'm going to be able to test all of them because there's just so many to choose from. But like I said, so many of them look similar and there's one main feature that really separates them besides a few other small details. First off, right off the bat, I'm getting rid of this one. This one needs to go, I need to go to Kohl's to return it to Amazon on because this one is awful. I did a whole nother video on it on why you should not get this one if you want to watch that. Don't get this system. Watch the video if you really want to find out why. So these are the ones that I'm left with. So starting from left to right, I have the Boss WL20. Next, this red one is the Amun wireless system. Next to that is another Amun wireless system, the black one. This one is supposed to work with active pickups, actually. Something you do have to keep in mind if you use active pickups, some of these wireless do not work with active pickups. So make sure you read that ahead of time. Next to that, I have have the X Vive U2. This was actually the very first one that I bought almost three, four years ago now, I think. And one of the first ones I've seen that did this. And last but not least, I have the Guitaria one, which I got for $30 on Amazon when it was on sale. So these do seem to be the most popular ones. There's another one like by Leekado. I don't know. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that looks almost exactly like the same thing as Guitaria in the Amun ones. There's another one by Nux, which is somewhat popular. And then Donner. Those seem to be the other ones that I've missed. But like I've said, I've bought so many of these, so I'm going to review these since it's not really necessary for me to buy more of them. I get the idea of how these work. Okay, so the main things that you should look at in these systems are the range of transmission, battery life, does it work for active or passive pickups? That's very important for your guitar. And the most important one is what frequency it transmits on. And that's what I'm going to get to in a little bit. But let's go over those other specs first. Obviously, there's also latency and sound quality. I will do a tone test here in a little bit. And as far as latency, I haven't noticed any problem with any of these. I haven't noticed or felt any latency with any of these products. Okay, first up battery life. I recommend ones that survive for five hours or more. Four hours might be okay as well. It really depends on what sets you're doing. You know, I play four hours a night usually, so I definitely need something that's listed at five hours. You want to go like about an hour beyond what you're going to be doing on an average set because, you know, set up, sound check, stuff like that, set breaks, things like that. The winner out of the ones that I've seen is the Boss WL20, which has an eight hour battery life. And I can confirm that with battery. I also like it when it gives you some sort of indication of when the battery is low on power. The WL20 also wins in this category. It turns orange if you only have two hours left and then turns red when you have less than I believe a half hour left. Some of them will blink. Some of them have a battery indicator. It just depends on that. It's not the end of the world. As long as you charge it before every show, it's, it's really not that bad. But I definitely would recommend one that have five or more hours. All of these can survive five hours. Something else to keep in mind about these batteries, they are not replaceable batteries. They have an internal battery. Once the battery has, you know, just like any rechargeable, you can only recharge it so many times. The battery will eventually die or actually it'll start holding less of a charge 
So you used to be able to use it for five hours, then it drops to four, then it drops to three, so on and so forth. And you have to just get a new unit. Some people get really upset about that. But I mean, if you're spending, you know, 40 to $60 on a wireless in two years, when the battery is depleted, or even longer than that, it depends on how often you use it, you have to spend another 40 to $60. That's not the end of the world. And that is just the way that these work. And that's the way that basically any rechargeable battery is going to work. And so when I get to my final recommendation, you're going to see why I recommend spending only 40 to 60 to 100 dollars on these units so as far as range goes these all are about 50 to 100 feet which to me is plenty for this type of price range the lowest one is actually the boss one which is listed at 50 almost all the other ones are listed at 100 the x5 one's a little bit confusing because i check one site says 70 another one says 100 on amazon it says 120 so it's it's somewhere in there you know as someone who has tested all of these it really just depends on the environment sometimes i'm able to walk all all the way across the room and through a wall and have no problems with it. Other times I can walk, you know, 10, 20 feet from my pedal board and it'll start to cut out. It really just depends on the environment. But all these are going to get you above 50 feet in a clear environment. So it shouldn't really be a deciding factor. I just personally would not get anything that is rated below 50 feet. Okay, really quickly, just kind of a few extra features on it. The X5 and the Black Amun one, you can actually pick the channel that you want. So you set that manually. You have four different channels that you can choose from. The Red Amun one and the Guitario one, you basically just turn it on and go with the frequency that it found. And then the Boss one, you actually put them together and it scans the environment and it finds the best channel to transmit on and it syncs them together. So it's pretty cool the way that that works. One other really quick thing that I really like about the boss is it has these little nubs here. So when you go to unplug, it actually mutes the signal, which is actually really nice because that way when you unplug your guitar, you don't get that loud popping sound. So it's actually really cool that they designed it that way. None of the other ones do that. Something else to keep in mind, the more wireless you have in one on one stage, the more likely you're gonna get dropouts. If you have a really, really crowded environment and then start adding a blot of wireless into that area, you're gonna have a lot of dropouts. Most of these units, they say you can use four at once. That's true if it's in an ideal environment, but if it's already crowded, you're already going to run into problems. Okay, so now the most important part, something to do with the frequencies. If you skipped ahead, welcome. If you didn't skip ahead, thank you for watching. All right, first up, the tone test, because if the tone sucks, there's no point in going over the other specs. So I'm going to play just a quick riff on each one of them, and one of them is going to be a cable, and the other one's going to be all the different wireless devices. I'm not going to tell you which one is which. I'm going to play through it. If you can't hear a difference between any of them, then that means they're all fine. If you do hear one or two that are bad, check the description to see which one you should should not get if you can hear a difference between these different tones. I'm just going to do it on a clean tone, no reverb, no delay, just so you can hear it for what it is. And clean tones are usually the easiest way to tell if you're getting tone loss or not. assuming you heard what just happened with two of those specifically. I was not planning on that happening, but I'm glad it did because it actually brings up probably the most important part about these wireless devices. So first of all, just the tone. I'm getting past, you know, the, the dropouts. So tone is tone is really tricky because if you listen to something back to back, you can hear something that sounds a little bit brighter and then hear something that sounds a little bit darker and you go, oh, that doesn't sound good because it's dark or vice versa. You could hear it dark and then you can hear it sound a little bit brighter and you're like, oh, that doesn't 
doesn't sound good. When I listened back, I could tell that the cable had a slightly different tone than the wireless ones. But were the wireless tones bad? To see, did you have one that you didn't like? If so, which one was it? Got it in your head? Okay, I'm gonna reveal which ones each of those were. Now, did you accidentally pick the cable? Possibly. This is kind of what's weird about this, is that when I listened through in this order, the cable sounded darker to me and therefore wasn't what I was expecting. So my brain went, uh, I don't know. This one sounds dark where the other ones sound nice and clear. However, if you put the cable tone first, <laughs> and then listened to the wireless one. So you might have gone, oh, it's way too bright and there's not enough low end. This is what's really tricky about tone. I'm sure people are going to be upset at me about saying that. But to me, it's does it sound good? Is it a usable tone? If so, use it and dial it in accordingly. To me, I could hear the difference when I sit down and I really listen. However, I've used all of these live and I've used cables live and I've never gone, oh, this is this is awful. It's never crossed my mind of, oh, I really need to fix this or anything like that. If it sounds fine when you use it live, then just go with it that way. If it sounds really awful when you plug it in, return it. Amazon's got a great return policy. But to me, all of them are acceptable. Again, I'm sure someone's going to be really upset with me for saying that. But even my more tone snob friends have used these systems like the Amun one. I've gotten a lot of friends to purchase those and they all really like them. I've never had a friend come back to me and say, dude, this, this thing sucks. The tone is awful. That's never happened. So in conclusion, does the tone sound good? If so, use it. If not, return it. I'm kind of against these A, B, comparisons there is there's a time and a place for it but your brain plays tricks on you when you hear one tone and then you hear another tone and because it sounds different you might think that it sounds better when in reality it just sounds different than the previous one that you heard that's my two cents on it take it or leave it okay so now for the obvious part the dropouts you heard that happen in number two and number six the problem with these plug and play wireless is that they currently all transmit on 2.4 gigahertz or 5.8 gigahertz. The, the problem with those frequencies is that those are the same frequencies as Wi-Fi. So it's a very crowded network. Now, the thing is, is that 2.4 gigahertz is more busy and has less channels available than 5.8. In my experience with playing with all of these, I might get the terminology wrong on 2.4 versus 5.8, but they are on the same channels as Wi-Fi and they are crowded for that reason. 5.8 works far more frequently than 2.4. 2.4 is a very crowded network. I would say 2.4 works about 80 to 90% of the time. And then 5.8, I would say works about 95% of the time. That's just my personal experience. But look what happened in my test. The second one that I used cut out, which was the Red Moon one, which is my favorite one, ironically, and the one that I recommend to most people, that one transmits on 5.8. And the one that cut out the most, number six, was the X5 one, which transmits on 2.4. Why did that happen? So it's really fascinating that these transmit on different signals. And in my house, in my studio room, we have a dual band router. It transmits on 5G and also transmits on 2.4 gigahertz. The X5 was not able to work. And that's what I found mostly with this. Again, the X5 I got very early on. Maybe I just got a bad model, but the X5 for sure has had the most problems for me out of all of them. The Amun one has cut out once on me at a show a long time ago. And it was only, and it was only if I walked, you know, more than 20 feet away. If I stayed close to it, it was fine. But even the Amun one, which is my favorite one and still the one that I recommend the most. If you're going to buy one of them, I recommend buying that one. But even that one is going to have its limitations and mine happens to be in my studio room. And here's the other thing that's really crazy about it is that the Amun one, both of those transmit on 5.8. The red one did not work. The black one did. The Guitaria X5 and Boss, those all transmit on 2.4. The Guitaria and the Boss one worked fine, but the X5 didn't. See how weird these things are? This is actually really perfect that this happened. This is just a great example of how less reliable these 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz are. 5.8 being better, but still not flawless. Is that a problem? I personally think not. At this price point, you know, that's not a bad deal to have them work 80 to 95% of the time. I've taken these all over the place. I brought Boss on my Europe tour back in 2019, you know, when things were good. Uh, the only place that it cut out was in Munich. Everywhere else, it seemed to be fine, although I didn't go around the stage too much. I brought the X5 to Cancun twice, one show it worked fine. The other time it cut out like once every 20 minutes. So it wasn't too bad.
bad. And it was really brief. I brought the X5 to Dominican Republic. It didn't work at all. In Jamaica, I brought my boss one for my singer to use on his acoustic guitar. He had zero problems with it. We also brought it to a gig that we did in the Middle East. Boss worked fine out there as well. I was extremely lucky to return to Cancun recently this year, and I brought both of my Amun wireless systems. Neither of them had any problems. When I play locally in Colorado, it really just all depends on the venue. Sometimes I've even gone back to the same venue where a wireless worked and it doesn't work the next time, which is just a complete mystery to me. It's just so all over the place. That's the main thing. And again, I told you my X5 was the one that didn't work, that has the most amount of problems. I played a show in Colorado for 60,000 people and it didn't cut out at all. I had to play guitar and banjo for that show and I used it for the banjo. It didn't cut out at all. So it, this is just this is just all over the place. You know, it's it's sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And that's kind of what you're going to have to accept with these. My, my Sennheiser that I use is in the 500 megahertz range and that one has never dropped out on me. So here's my big reveal, you know, that you've all been waiting for, I guess. Okay, so my big reveal for this, what I would recommend doing is because 2.4 and 5.8 are unpredictable, 5.8 being more reliable than 2.4 in my experience of using a lot of these, is I would, if you're going to get one wireless, I would get something in the 5.8. I like the Amun one. Guitaria has it. That Licato one has it as well. Something in 5.8 because those cost about 60 bucks. That's, that is not bad to have a wireless that works 90 to 95% of the time. However, those 2.4 gigahertz ones are only $40. At least the Guitaria ones and the cheaper Amun ones and stuff like that. So if you buy one of each, that's $100, which is a killer deal for two wireless systems and they transmit on two separate frequencies. So if you go to a venue and 5.8 is acting up, you can try your 2.4 gigahertz one and see if that frequency is better for $100. And because of that, that is the reason I can't recommend, I personally don't recommend the X5 or the Boss one. The Boss one has the best battery life. It's the best built. It feels solid. The other ones do feel a little cheaper, but they still work just as fine. But the Boss and the Boss one has that mute feature, which is great. But I can't justify $200 for the Boss one. I definitely can't recommend the X5 one for $150 when 2.4 gigahertz is just that unpredictable. So, I would recommend buying one of each. That way you have two different wireless on two different frequencies. Does that make sense? Something and that brings up another point that's really weird about this. A friend of mine plays the X5 all the time. That's his main wireless. He's never had any problems with it except at one venue. He says at one venue he can't use it. Everywhere else it's fine. I've played shows with him where his work and mine did not. And I even switched just in case it was like my guitar or something like that. I used his and it worked fine. So I don't, I don't quite under that. I'm kind of just stuck on. And if you look at the reviews, the X5 is probably the most marketed one. You know, they do a lot of marketing. That one is rated pretty well. A lot of people don't have problems with it. It's it's just such an unpredictable thing and your experience is probably going to differ. That's why I would recommend if you're going to get one of these cheap plug and play ones to buy two of them, one on 5.8, one on 2.4 for only a hundred bucks, then you have two wireless systems on two separate frequencies. If you really want to get a good reliable system, I would recommend getting something in, you know, the, the 400 megahertz up to 600 megahertz range. My Sennheiser one is my favorite one. I've never had any problems with that one. I did a whole nother video on that one if you're interested. If you're interested in a good entry level one, the Shure PGX one is great. I used that for years without any problems as well. I think in five years, I had it cut out one time for like a second. That one is about 350 though. So if you're looking to jump up into the next category, you could look into those. But if you're looking for one of these cheap ones, I think getting two of them for $100 is completely fair. Okay, so to finally wrap up, because this video got way longer than I was planning on it to be. 2.4 and 5.8 are less reliable frequencies. However, 5.8 is more reliable. I would buy two systems, one on 2.4, one on 5.8, one for $40 and one for $60 for a total of $100 for two wireless systems. I think that's totally fair. But I would not go into this thinking that you're, that these cheap plug and play systems are the end all be all going to be amazing systems. You're going to have to spend a little bit more money if you want more reliability. However, again, I've used that Amun one so many times, it's only let me down once at one show. And even then, I was too far away from it and it just doesn't work in my studio room. So I still think you can get good use out of these. Just don't set it so high that it's going to be the best thing that it's going to take the place of these really expensive wireless. They're more expensive for a reason, but I would still recommend purchasing some of these in my opinion. So I hope that helped you guys out. Links to purchase all of these devices are in the comments down below. They are all Amazon affiliate links. So that is a good way to support my channel and it doesn't cost anything to you if you purchase using my link. If you guys are using any of these 
plug and play wireless systems? Can you leave a comment down below? Let me know your experience with them. If you made it to the end of this video, I would just ask that you hit the like button. Even if you don't subscribe, just hitting the like button because this video helped you out or anything like that, it does help push the video into the YouTube algorithm a little bit more. So I would appreciate that. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.